One common question I get is what it means to be in a low capacity area versus a high capacity area when using Starlink. Now that there is no more Starlink waitlist, the subject gets a little bit more confusing. After all, if the waitlist is gone, there should be plenty of capacity everywhere, right? In this video, we're going to take a look at what it means when Starlink describes an area as low capacity versus high capacity. I'll explain the effects that capacity has on performance, availability, and pricing. So what does Starlink capacity mean exactly? Starlink capacity is a measure of Starlink users and network resources for any given area. In rural areas that don't have a lot of subscribers, there's plenty of capacity. In densely populated areas with lots of Starlink subscribers, there will be a lot less capacity. There isn't a detailed description from Starlink as to what they define as high or low capacity, but my guess is that they are using some sort of internal statistics or thresholds to determine whether an area is high or low capacity. Although Starlink doesn't exactly define what each category means, we can use the information that they provide in the availability map to get a good idea of how Starlink will perform in any given area. How can I view Starlink capacity in my area? To view the Starlink capacity map for your area, you have to go to the website starlink.com and click on Roam, and then select Availability Map from the site menu. It's important to note that Starlink has different types of maps on the website, depending on which service that you're currently clicked on. So for example, if you're on the residential page and you click on Availability Map, you'll get a map that shows availability and not capacity. When you're on the Starlink capacity map for Rome, you can hover over any area with the mouse and it will pop up as either high capacity, low capacity, or no coverage. So what exactly is the difference between a high capacity area and a low capacity area? Well, you can break this down into speeds, availability, and cost. Let's go ahead and start with speeds. Low capacity areas have more Starlink users and network traffic so speeds will be slower, especially during peak hours, usually from about 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. Expect your download and upload speeds to be on the lower end of the published Starlink speeds. In contrast, high capacity areas have less Starlink users, so expect your speeds to be on the higher end of those averages. Capacity isn't the only factor that affects Starlink speeds. Starlink has multiple different types of data, each with a different network priority value, so for example, business users have the highest priority and Rome users will have the lowest priority on the network. In other words, a business user in a low capacity area will generally get higher speeds than a Rome user in that same area. Besides performance, the second factor here is availability. Since Starlink got rid of the waitlist, capacity no longer prevents Starlink services from being available in an area. Rome has always been available anywhere, but now so is residential and business. The capacity map that we're talking about in this video is just a tool to determine what kind of performance you might expect when using Starlink in a specific location. The final factor that I'm going to talk about and the difference between low and high capacity is service plan pricing. It's kind of a separate issue, but it is related in some way. So like I mentioned before, Starlink uses their own internal data to determine what low capacity and high capacity is. They also use their own data to pick which addresses are eligible for discounted service plan prices. In some locations, the residential plan only costs $90 a month in the United States versus the normal $120 a month price. Prices aren't determined by capacity though, at least in terms of the capacity shown on the map that we're talking about in this video. In other words, discounted pricing isn't guaranteed just because your area is listed as high capacity. The discounted rates are promotional in nature and eligibility is determined solely by Starlink based on your specific address. So in conclusion, Starlink makes it really easy to view network capacity in a given area with their availability map tool. If you're in a low capacity area, you can expect your Starlink speeds to be slower than average, especially during peak hours. On the other hand, if you're in a high capacity area, you'll generally get higher than average speeds. If there's anything else you'd like to know about Starlink capacity or anything Starlink, please leave a comment on the video below.